what Jesus does for us, you know, he'll he'll go to the highest mountain to get us, just like the Bible says he left the ninety nine just to go get the one. Amen. That's right. That's right. Yes. Yes, it does. It really does. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. But well, you know, the fourth of July is around the corner, so I try to think of what kind of sermon to do you know for freedom but of course it's always going to be you know the only freedom we can ever really have is to you know leave sin (laughs) put it behind us you know and stuff so we have that in Christ you know so um once upon a time there was this little church you know and they said uh they called the uh head of the denomination and they said we need a preacher we want a hellfire preacher So he went and got him one. So after a few days, they come back to him. We need a preacher. We need a hellfire preacher. (laughs) And so he sends them another one. So same thing happens again. He's like, what in the world? Well, this one, they didn't come back. So months went by, and he ran into them, and he says, what in the world happened? What was it about these other preachers that you didn't like? What was it that this one did right? He said, well, what it was is, he said, the other one's preached hellfire, but the last one preached like he didn't want us to go there. Uh-huh. You know? <laughs> so I said, well, that's something. That, that's yeah. something to think of, you know? <laughs> you know, so, yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to open up with a verse. It's in Ephesians. It's in Ephesians 2, and verse is going to start at verse 1. And while you do that, I'm going to pray. Father God, I pray that you bless this message. Lord, I ask that you speak through me. Um, I just want it to come from the Holy Spirit, Lord. Um, And I pray that um, it'll fall on open ears, Lord. And I pray that no one leaves here the same as they did coming in. I pray for those that couldn't be here, Lord. I ask that you touch them for whatever reasons or what's going on in their lives, Lord. You know, we have a hurting people, Lord. And we know that you're the answer to anything that they are going through, Lord. And we ask that you touch them and heal them. And we ask that you be there and comfort them in their really rough times, Lord. You are a God of miracles, Lord. You still are. And we ask that you just bless us, Lord, and protect us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, Lord. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start. It says in Ephesians 2, verse 1, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. You see, it is not the true nature of a born-again Christian to live in a life of sin. It's just not. Um, like this verse says, in time past, uh, who you know, ye ye walked according to the course of this world. And then it also says, down there in verse 3, it says, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Um, you know, a lot of people believe that once we are saved, it doesn't matter anymore. You know, that we're, we're okay. You know, we can live in sin. We don't, you know, uh, yeah, so everything's okay. You know, Jesus died for us to save us from sin, not just the penalty of sin. Um, you know the phrase, be not deceived. We've heard it in the Bible. Well, it's in there five times. And I want to go over a few of these times that it's in there because, you know, when he says be not deceived, that's important. He wants us to know, don't let the enemy deceive us. Okay, um, I'm going to start. It's in Deuteronomy 11. And it's verse 16 if you want to follow along. <clears throat> I 
I couldn't think of anything better to preach on. You know, I really couldn't. It's just, we have to preach against sin, you know. And I, it, it's not a condemning thing. Because, you know what, the Holy Spirit will convict us. But it's Satan that will condemn us. And make us feel like we're condemned and we can't be forgiven. That's not true. He's a liar. Okay, I'll go ahead and start with Deuteronomy 11 and 16. It says, Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. You see, people have made gods out of everything. Anything that comes before God, okay? I don't care if it's music, entertainers, materialistic things, even people's pets. <laughs> You know, we love our pets. We actually, we love all these things, right? But, the, but we put them in, our, in their place, in the rightful place. You know, God has to come first. Um, I've had people, I've seen people care more about the chihuahuas than they do their kids. <laughs> um, they'll put their, their dog on a leash, but the kids will let run wild. Um, <laughs> I, heard, I heard once about how they wanted to drill for oil somewhere in the U.S., uh, and which would have been a great thing for the economy. Uh, would have been cheap, cheaper, you know, and everything. But they stopped it. And they would not allow the drilling of the oil because of a stupid lizard. <laughs> yes, they said it was endangered. So they couldn't drill. I don't know if y'all ever heard of that. Because it was true. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you know... I don't mean to sound, you know, towards animals. I love animals. But, you know, <laughs> I don't think I'd miss the lizard, okay? Uh, you know, they say they're endangered, or this kind of lizard, I guess, or whatever. Well, you know, dinosaurs went instinct too, didn't they? I don't miss them. I don't think I would want to see a dinosaur, something the size of a dinosaur, out here in the church parking lot. Okay? <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> I think we would do fine. <laughs> God has a way of, of, you know, taking care of things, <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> but people even worship the environment and the earth. Have you noticed that? It's all over. It's pretty bad, you know. Bible tells us that we should not worship creation. We should worship the creator. There was a church I seen once that had, si- had signs made. They said, so-and-so Baptist church has adopted this highway. What they would do is they would go out pick up the beer cans that the sinners would throw out on Friday nights. You wouldn't catch me doing that. I would rather preach to the sinners so that they might give up drinking and get saved. (laughs) Right? (laughs) So, uh, another time that this be not deceived is in the Bible. It's in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. Um, And it says, uh, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, or extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now, I've heard preachers say, well, that just means that you you won't have a big inheritance there. You'll still be there. But I'm sorry, when you inherit a home, that's your home. That's where you're going to live. You know, the way the Bible's talking, no, you're not going to be, you don't, you're not going to inherit, you're not going to have an inheritance there in the kingdom of God. You know, why must we preach against sin? Because sin will ruin your marriage. Sin will ruin your relationships. Sin will get you a disease. Sin will put you in prison. Sin will, get, will take everything you have. Sin will make you sick and ultimately it will kill you. And most importantly, sin will lead people to hell. You know, life here on earth is but a vapor compared to eternity. You know, that little uh, thing that Carla had shared with us once about the guy. I, I seen that clip where this preacher, he had a little piece of yarn right here and he said, this is our lives. Well, that piece of yarn just went on and on and on and on. There's no end to it, you know. That's the way he was making it out to be. 
And he says, you know, in this little bit of, of yarn, this little bit of our life, we, we look at what we're going to do for vacation this year. What are we going to do? Where's our kids going to go to school here? Where's our going to, you know, we make all these plans and we go through all this stuff, you know, but we don't even plan on or look at what's to follow that goes on for eternity. It doesn't even stop. You know, that's something to think about, you know. It's hard to think about it because we don't see it. You know, we just see, yeah, we're here and we die. It's hard to understand that there is a life beyond, you know, it keeps on going. You know, but we have to, we have, and by knowing that, it makes us want to grab people and grab them out of the fire. You know, I mean, that's so important, you know. There's a such thing as literally loving people. And, th- and I'm telling you, with everything that God has, Satan counterfeits it. And one of the counterfeited things, which is almost the most deceptive, is this false love. It's, honey, it's okay. I love you. Don't worry about it. No, you're okay. Don't worry about it. You are walking them in comfort to hell. You have to let people know. We have to warn people. You know, this stuff, we, it can carry us to hell. It's just like a parent that has a child. They put restrictions on that child because they don't want them to suffer the consequences. You know, we have to do the same thing for others. You know, we care about others. We need to warn them. You know, if we don't, it's a false sense of peace when there is no peace. You know, they'll go to hell over this, you know. And they feel like everything's okay, you know. It's not okay. You know, sin is never okay. Whether it's the believer or the non-believer's. You know, that's why you see, you know, a lot of times people say, oh, you know, the church is a museum for the for the ones, what they say, for the saints or something. Then some people, well, it's for the hurting. It's for everybody. You know, people come into church, but they change. Church is supposed to be transforming the preaching and the, t- you know, you go through the Bible reading and it, re, you know, re, what do they say, reforms their minds. It, re, you know, regenerates us. And, you know, there's supposed to be a difference, you know. Um like I said, it's this hyper grace, false love gospel that makes people comfortable, you know, while in sin, you know. Um, there is this gospel that essentially says you can say this three minute magic prayer and you're saved. There's nothing, you know, no. And, and I know a lot of people don't like hearing that, <laughs> but it's the truth. If it's not from the heart and if it doesn't produce, Amen. you know, people, you know, they say know them by their fruits. How do we know them by their fruits? Amen. Right? And it it just essentially says that once you say this prayer, you know, everything's okay, you know. Um, Even God looks at our heart, right? Yes, he does. And he also sees us. And it says that he he sees everything, beholding the evil and the good. Mm -hmm. You know, so he sees. We don't become invisible once we get saved. We don't become invisible. God sees everything, you know. Amen. You know, we're always worried about what is this one going to say or what's that one. You know, I'm just thinking of Facebook, right? You know, people watch what they post. Well, I, you know, I don't want so-and-so to see this. Oh, we better not do that. Well, let's private message this to so-and-so. Well, let's, you know, God sees all of it. <laughs> God sees all of it, you know. We need to worry about him. Not worry about what so-and-so sees. They're not our judge. God's the judge. Amen. You know, all these verses, this is God's judgment, not mine. This is not Brother Johnny's. This is God's judgment. This is what he says, and we need to know this. You know, Jesus said, unless we repent, we will all likewise perish. You know, when Jesus preached, there was a massive crowd. There was a massive crowd. Now, if Jesus was a charlatan, only looking for numbers, he would not have said what he said. And we see in Scripture. Today, if, if I stood here and preached the stuff that Jesus preached, they would tell me I'm not being Christ-like. I've seen that on Facebook. But it's the truth. They, would, they do. <laughs> when you say anything about anything, you know, who are you to judge? Who are you to, you know, the, it's not my judge. I love you. I, it's, I love you. I'm not perfect either. Help me out too, you know. Um, Jesus said it was in Luke 14, 25. Um, there's a couple of them I'll go through right here. It says, And there went a great multitudes with him. 
And he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, hate not his, his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and also his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Did he mean hate as in what we are thinking of hate? No. He means put him first. Love him first, love them less. We have to put God first above all things at all times. Um, but if we don't do that, you can't be my disciple. This is what he's saying. And then he says, And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. You know, <clears throat> How do we stop sinning? Okay, this is the question. Because I, you know, especially when you think of like addictions. Uh, there's all kind of addictions. I don't care if it's uh, drugs, alcohol, pornography, gambling. There's so many different addictions. Um, eating, all of them. Uh, <clears throat> but when you think about the Sermon on the Mount, when Jesus said, and I'll start at Matthew 5, uh, starting at verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, this is believers, by the way, saying, but I say unto you, that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if the right, and I'm going down to verse 20, that was 28, going to verse 29, and if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of the members shall perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. He's talking to believers. And then he says, And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thy, that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Okay, now when Jesus said, cut off your right hand, of course he didn't mean to dismember yourself. He, he meant that we should do whatever it takes to put the sin in our lives to death. Amen. Notice how he said, if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. Okay, he didn't say cut it off and put it in your pocket until later. Okay. <laughs> We need to take whatever measures we need to to get the, the sin out of our life. We need to slay it before it slays us. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of people, um, like say for instance, when you go through like drug addiction, uh, rehabilitation and counseling, things like that, you know, um, they'll teach you. Uh, well, there's this one man I, I've been listening to. He's really good, and he's, he, that's what he does. He counsels with what addiction, uh, people in addictions and stuff. And he was talking about that very verse, you know, where he said to cast it away. In other words, don't just, you know, oh, well, not right now, you know, <laughs> maybe later. <laughs> but he was talking about how, you know, a lot of people, when you, especially people like that, um, they do whatever they have to do to get rid of it. Well, what they do is they try to refrain from bad relationships bad people that they know is you know um that can lead them astray or be a stumbling block they stay away from it there's trigger objects you see that's what that's what the things that jesus would tell us to stay away from you know it's always things that are bad usually that you know does this that brings back these triggers for us you know um but anyway he said that uh he had the problem with uh pornography and he said that his wife got to where she was always watching what he was watching on TV or on the computer and stuff. He was all, she was always, you know, uh, you know, rechecking, going through his history. And, all, and other people would say, oh, quit it. That's ridiculous, you know. But no, he let her do it. He said because it was like something that, it was something that it was, it was helping keeping him in line, helping him to be able to refrain from, you know, that, what, that problem. And he said that now as a pastor, um, they have other, uh, you know, uh, churches or ministries there connected and they all have 
the same. They can all go into each other's thing and look at what they've been doing and looking at. He said it just is a matter of keeping each other, you know, in line, you know, trying to help the brother, just trying to do it that way. He said it works wonderful. But he was just saying how you just do whatever you have to do, you know, to get rid of these things. It doesn't just fall in place. Have you ever noticed, like, whenever you try to stop something, you're going to get tempted. Something's going to come along. You know, to try to tempt you and to and to try to snare you, you know. And <clears throat> just like Brother Johnny had talked about with his testimony when he stopped smoking. And he says, nah, he says uh, after he quit and everything and he felt that pull and he was like, well, what is it? Is there something in my house, you know, that's causing this? And I don't remember exactly how it went, but he said something about an ashtray that his mother gave him or it was like a, a sentimental piece that he just had. And finally, you know, Sister Barbara says, oh, yeah, that's right. You have this, you know, here. Well, he, did you smash it, you said? You got rid of it. Well, then he felt so much release from that. But it's like, you know, if you ever notice, because I've done this, I've done this. <clears throat> like whenever you're trying to, to stop something. You know what I mean? If you know in the back of your mind that you have those old rolling papers, Okay. Well, before I went into rehab, I forgot I did have a little bit of this left, you know. But they don't want to get rid of it. They don't really say, okay, let's flush it. They just kind of leave it for just in case. You see what I mean? That's not really forsaking. You do what you have to do to wipe your hands of it. Go ahead and flush it and say, this is it. I made up my mind. I'm stopping it. I'm forsaking this sin. I'm forsaking this because... The enemy has a plan with that sin, you know, it's to ruin us. And it's <clears throat> and if we ever go back to it, we're gonna end up in the same position, even worse, you know, than what it was before. If we do end up going back, so we have to think ahead and think, okay, no, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. This is it. I made up my mind. Whatever I have to do to forsake this, I'm gonna do it. You know. It's not worth it, you know. Um <clears throat> We have to watch what comes through our eyes and our ears. You know, like we talked about. Well, we always talk about that here. But, you know, the last time I was here, we talked about it, you know. <clears throat> but you know what? I, this, there was another addictions uh, thing I was watching, and it was actually Perry Stone. He had a woman on that was a, an addiction counselor. And this just really opened my eyes. I mean, even way more than what I thought of before, okay? And... Um, it was very interesting. Uh, like things like I'll just use for instance pornography. Okay, <clears throat> God did make our God did not make our brains to see unclean things. Um, things that He calls unclean. Okay, we have a natural pleasures that He gives us uh, within His will and His ways. You know, like a married couple. I'll just say that because I know Nick's in here. <laughs> Uh, but but then there's outside of his, you know, will for us and that he calls unclean. When we look at these images, they actually leave an imprint or a coding in our brain, which will pop up and the brain will retrieve these pictures spontaneously. It could be while we're at home, at church or anywhere. It is emotional memories. And our brain is made up to where, <clears throat> this is what really got me. <clears throat> when we see such images, these neurons fire up. Not only is it encoded in the brain, but the brain actually thinks and responds as if it, we were actually in that situation in real life. Um, just saying that kind of act, okay? Um, that are on these images. <clears throat> it's very important to watch what we allow to come in. I couldn't help but think of these sadistic video clips that will people post on Facebook. Things like people being beheaded, um, acts of child abuse, animal abuse. I know we've all seen this, right? <laughs> in a sense, when we see that stuff, <clears throat> our brain responds as if we're there and that we're witnessing it. It really can traumatize people. 
Um, and it desensitizes people when they see it over and over. Uh, we think desensitized means um, we just get used to it. It's okay. It's no big deal later. But no, when we get desensitized, our brain is not naturally, we're not supposed to be able to, we're not supposed to see that kind of stuff. And it does come out some way or another when we repeatedly see this stuff. <clears throat> um, it's just like with the whole addiction thing. You know what I mean? Like it re- releases these neurons and stuff when people just take drugs. Um, and they do it and it just the neurons are going crazy. It's like an overflow. Well, then afterwards, um, you know, that it their brain like kind of goes into a state of where it's like um, all the... Uh, firing and everything just kind of lays there and it's like at no activity you know what I mean it's not at no activity but very slow to activity and everything and it's like that for a while and it gets like prolonged that's why when people when they come off of these things they feel really bad even porn addicts really do they go through the same kind of stuff well, Be- don't you think, I'm sorry, uh, I think it also means to desensitize once we repeatedly do something that we know that we know is wrong yeah Yes. Think, when I, it makes me think of the games that kids are playing. And they're shooting up people and they're shooting up and all this stuff. And then they wonder, how can this kid go into a school? In their minds, they are... And nowadays, the, the, the pictures and the images and these videos is so realistic. I mean, they've even got this... this uh, what do they call that? Where they put on the goggles and they watch it. What is, yes, virtual reality. And that says it all. It's just like reality. So you know, they really truly get desensitized to it. And they're, and what are they doing? They're blaming the guns. They're blaming the, <laughs> they don't even realize what's going on. You know, I don't know why or who's, in, who's uh, in control of that stuff, but stuff is no longer censored. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I mean, it's everything but porn. Uh, you know, even that sometimes, if you know, go to the, channels or whatever you'll see something that i mean and they don't understand you know and the stuff is just oh my gosh <clears throat> in romans six thirteen, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin but yield yourself unto god as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto god you know, God, this is over. I mean, I, you can just start reading the Bible, <laughs> you know. And th- that's what gets me about these these uh, people-pleasing churches that you see on TV and stuff like that. It's like they don't dare say anything about sin. And it's like every other ver- I mean, when you just start reading it, looking for things. I mean, like just getting ready for the sermon. I'm looking and I'm like, well, I mean, there's just so many you can't. Go, you can't go through it all, you know. It's crazy. <clears throat> People would think, why would you want to preach about sin? You know, shouldn't you only preach about the grace of God and how he forgives us? You see, that is the good news. Definitely. You know, but you see, the lack of preaching against the sin and the lack of warning people about hell is a sure way to lead them to hell. People no longer fear God. You know, people, you know... They're afraid of offending somebody. You know, that's the truth. This is a false love. You know, what better way for Satan? I don't feel like I've been to church. Yeah. I have got not offended. Yeah. Oh, I used to get offended all the time. <laughs> Brother Johnny, and I, you know, I mean, when he was, he preached about sin all the time, you know. And like he said, what, the last time I think he preached, he said, he said, I was trying to think of what to preach about. And I'm like, nothing better than talk about sin and let's get this sin out of our lives, you know. Because it is sin that kills us, you know. It is sin that kills us, you know. They don't mind putting stuff on TV. All these warnings on TV, they, it just kills me when you think about it, you know. The warnings against smoking or the warnings against this and warnings against that and then the next commercial is about cigarettes and you know and drinking and all this it's like wow you know it's such a mixed mixed message you know especially with the youth you know oh man wow (laughs) you know and, and if you really you know like i said satan does counterfeit love he does it's so deceptive isn't it i mean we can you know true love true love is an action 
brought on with the condition of the heart for the well-being of another. It's not just an emotion. It's not just about, oh, I just, I just want you to feel good. Don't worry. It's okay. You're all right. You're saved. You know, yeah, saved. that's a hate message if I ever heard one. It is. It really is. Um, Think about parenting, like I said, you know, and how we need to tell our kids no at times because that's their best interest is at stake. They might not understand now, but guess what? They'll all understand later. You know, back before I got born again, I hated it. I hated here, and I always felt like, oh, this is aimed at me, <laughs> you know. I mean, I, I, I think that's with anybody. I mean, you know, you just kind of like, oh, my gosh, you know. But it's just, it ain't, it, the Holy Spirit does convict. He really does, you know. He really, really, really does. <laughs> uh, You have to be with love. Yeah. Because we feel feel like, you know, we've already been there and done that, but we don't realize that they're young and they have not been there and done that. Amen. We offend people when we don't mean to. Yes, yes, right, right. But you know what? And I totally agree because I tell you what, I missed that mark for a long time. I would kept thinking, no, I just have to give the truth, give the truth. But I was lacking. You have to give love. You have to tell them about the grace of God. It's real. It's a gift. It is a gift. A gift means something you don't have to pay back, right? Um, I'm going to go in that too. <laughs> um, there's not a harder message about sin than what Jesus Christ preached. You know, um, and you know what? I'm, I'm glad that God loves me enough to warn me. I am so glad that God warns us. You know, people always say, why would such a great God just let people get, send people to hell? Why would such a great God allow all this suffering in the world? Well, guess what? That's people that's not listening to him. You know, he does warn us. He does tell us. I mean, his word is full of it. You know, we just have to open our eyes and want to know. You can tell people, too, all day long. If they don't want it, if they don't want to hear the truth, they're going to reject it. They're going to, oh, she hates me. He hates me. You know, this is all about me. Well, (laughs) that's nothing but the enemy. It's nothing but the enemy. You know? um, Okay, many... We're, this is something that we need to look at because <clears throat> many were made sinners, okay, and many were made righteous. How is this? When we go and we look at Romans 5, okay, and I'm going to go ahead and start. It's Romans 5, 19. It says, for as by one. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, it took so long. Appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Thanks. It's, it was frozen. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much. My throat was gone. <clears throat> okay, this verse here is <clears throat> Romans 5.19. It says, For as by one man's disobedience, right, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Now, when we look at that verse, okay, it says many were made sinners, Right? Well, then we look at Romans 5, 12. How is this? How does this happen? Wherefore, as by one man's sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all that have, for all have sinned. It's not because Adam sinned, we're going to hell. It's because after Adam sinned, you know, you know, you see how people, like when they raise children, the kids learn things. They learn this, so, this lifestyle, you know. And it, Genesis 6 is the perfect explanation. I know a lot of people think that means these big, you know, metaphors. It's about fallen man. That's what Nephilim even means, is fallen. <laughs> but it's, you know, it truly means they were made, it says, for all have sin. That's how we became fallen. Then, it's not the unbelievers are guilty, and this word is key, because of Adam's sin, but because they have sinned. You see, our nature is fallen because of Adam's sin, and because we follow others, by example, into sin, the world continually falls into sin. Now, the good news is, God does love us, and He loves us so much that He sent His only begotten Son to die for us. He came to save us from our sins. 
not only from the penalty of sin. God gives mercy and grace to those that repent and believe on Jesus and his righteousness. He was the only one perfect. And it is a gift. And with a gift, we don't pay it back. And it's no longer, or it's no longer a gift. But God does call us all to repent and turn from sin. Even Paul said in 1 Corinthians that he would keep his body into subjection, lest he himself become a castaway. The Holy Spirit will convict us of sin. And if we repent, God will forgive us if we repent and forsake our sins. But the enemy will make us feel condemned. He will make us feel that we don't deserve that forgiveness. The Holy Spirit will convict us of sin, but we cannot refuse, confuse the two. For instance, the same devil that will tell a young woman that abortion is okay and that it's not really a baby will be telling her tomorrow after the abortion that what they did was so horrible as a matter of fact, that he will tell her it's so horrible that God will never forgive her for it and that she should kill herself. Or he will tell her the next day that drugs are okay and they might even make her feel better. And it might make her faint pain go away. Well, and you know the rest of that story. You see, it's the devil behind that. And then people think, you know, what if we've committed really bad sins? Can God for still forgive us? We have to know that God's grace is sufficient and that he forgives those things that we can't, that we have problems with forgiving. Um, and that's important to know because we can't just look at people and say, you know, oh, look at this idiot. You know, look at what they did. They did this and that and the other. You know, I don't care what it is. You know, God's the one that's going to have to judge that person. God's the one that is between him and God. And you know what? If that person repents, God will forgive them. God will forgive them. Who are we to sit and just hate on them? Because that's hate. We should mourn and be like, oh, I feel so, oh my gosh. What did, what, the first thing I hear when I hear about somebody that stacks their kids up like, like log on a bed, you know, that kills them. or so, First thing I think, what made them do that? I mean, my heart goes out to these children. But also, I want to know, something happened. Something went wrong with this person that did it. You know, I mean, right away, I'm like, oh my gosh, they don't realize what they just did. You know, but if God, God, God can forgive in, in, in ways that we can't understand. Um, yeah, yes. Uh, Romans 5.20 says, <clears throat> Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. So those that even committed the more sins, the more severe sins and stuff, hey, God's even put out more grace for that person, you know. Um, Jesus broke the power of sin and death. Um, his death on the cross didn't just pay, like I said, for his, our sins to be pardoned. It purchased our freedom. The chains are gone. Sin can no longer hold power in our lives as children of God. The Bible tells us that when we abide in Him and live by the Holy Spirit, we can experience victory and overcome sin. Uh, James 1, it says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, I guess y'all want to go ahead and close? or, yeah. or you can just do Okay, all right. Yes. Yeah. Father God, I thank you for this service, Lord. I thank you for, for every bit of it, Lord. And I thank you for everybody that's here to, today. And I thank you for, you know, getting them here, Lord. And I, I pray for get those that, like I said, that's not here. And I, and I ask that you touch them in their lives in any way that they need. Um, you're an all-knowing God. And I know you know everything about us, Lord. And I ask that you cleanse us. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness, Lord. Because we want to please you, Lord. We love you. And thank you so much. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.